Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Nate Kaywood, and today we're talking about honing your skills as a filmmaker and how sometimes it's important to get a second bite at the apple. Okay, well I know what some of you are thinking, which is probably, what the hell does that mean? Okay, well those of you who are familiar with the channel, you'll know that last week I did a sort of analysis video of my first short film, talking about what I thought was successful in it, what I wish I had done differently, and what I felt I learned from the project. And so today I want to talk about how to learn from your past mistakes and how to implement correcting them in your upcoming projects. So just to remind you what I'm talking about, here is a quick little snippet from my first short film ever. How are you? Great. Great. And now for the bad news. Why? You got a zero out of five stars on your review, Mark. What? How's that possible? Every employer fills out an online review about each temp they have. It's based on a five-star scale rating. They didn't want to have you back because he's too skinny and he's got limp arms. What? They wrote that? His face is a bit moly. What? Looks like a sexual offender. They really wrote that? I added the last part. You think it's funny? Old joke. Added. It's not funny. Okay, right. <clears throat> Thank you for that. And this is the video that I'd like to talk about today. My first spec commercial. It goes a little something like this. Fantastic job in shipping, Ted. Switching to FedEx was inspired. But FedEx.com makes shipping so simple, now you're overqualified and I have to let you go. Oh. Dwayne, sorry, but you're overqualified. FedEx.com makes shipping so simple, it's too simple for you. You're fired. Cool. FedEx.com is too easy. You're overqualified. I gotta let you go. Mm -mm. Pack your bags, Taffy. You're overqualified. <laughs> you got two weeks. We're gonna miss you, buddy. No shipping company is easier to use. Okay, first off, let's talk about what a spec commercial is. It's basically your visual resume to present to producers, financiers, brands, clients, agencies, all that sort of stuff. You're like, here I shot stuff on my own so you know that I can do this job. Just to have full transparency, I did not write this commercial, okay? I'm very lucky and I have a friend here in Los Angeles who's a commercial producer who ended up introducing me to a friend of his who is a copywriter for an ad agency who essentially let me have this script from sort of his old backlog of commercials that never got made. So I'm very grateful to him and to Corey. Thank you for uh, hooking me up. So why am I talking about this today and why am I showing you these two projects back to back? The reason is because you just don't have to reinvent the wheel every time that you shoot a project. I ended up shooting this spec FedEx commercial about six months after I shot that short film. And in the video last week, I said one of the things that I would have done differently if I reshot my short film would be to, the first thing that I would do is since this is a comedy, I would edit it to be paced up faster. Well, I can't really say that about the FedEx commercial because I cut it to play really, really fast which makes sense for a commercial because you only have a short period of time to capture people's attention. And so it has to be fast and it has to be funny. Okay, so now we're getting to the meat of what I wanted to talk about today. If you watch both of these projects back to back, you will see that the color palette is similar. You will see that the framing is similar. You will see that the coverage, composition, angles, and lensing are all really similar. And the reason that I did that is because to me, this is the most important scene in filmmaking and I want to be able to be fluent in this particular way of achieving this moment in a story, right? And by that, I mean, this is two people talking to one another. In, this, in these particular setups, they're talking to each other across a desk, but they could be talking to each other anyway. They could be sitting next to each other in a car. They could be next to each other in bed. They could be walking in a park. They could be standing across from each other in a large, elegant room. So the technical aspect of this is that there are two people talking, so you have a master wide shot. Then you go in for coverage of each person. I got a medium wide shot and then like a sort of medium close up. So there's two reasons why I chose to do the lensing and the composition this way. One is that I found when you put the camera for the coverage inside of the conversation, you're not doing over the shoulders. You're not seeing like a dirty person talking this way and then I'm talking this way. Like you're not seeing a person in the, in the frame. I think that helps for comedy because it allows you to not have to worry about the other character's continuity, about where they're moving. It's all about time 
timing. So if you don't have the other character in, you don't have to worry about their face being tilted or them saying something or you never have to match. If you're just focused on the one person saying the thing, it can just be um, bop, 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 and you can make it really fast in the edit. The other reason is that the filmmakers that I really aspired to at the time shoot this way. The Coen brothers, Wes Anderson, Janixa Bravo. Yorgos Lanthimos shoots this way a lot. And there's a reason for that. There's something inherently funny and absurd about using wide lenses and getting close to characters. It distorts their face. And so I wanted to replicate that. I wanted to understand the practicalities of that. I wanted to understand why you make those choices as a filmmaker. And I felt like in my first short film, even though I attempted to do it, I didn't get it right. And so instead of just moving on to the next thing to be like, okay, well, how do I do an interesting tracking shot? Or should I do a dolly rake across these? Or like, oh, should I drop the camera into the two shot? Or I was like, no, I wanna focus on accomplishing the thing that I set out to do and make sure that I do it right and understand the inner workings of how these angles, how this setup, how this blocking works in a scene. And I think I was able to achieve that. After doing these two projects, I feel comfortable saying that I understand some of the frameworks of the technical aspect of framing, lensing, blocking, and directing a two-person comedic scene. Some of those things that I learned is pacing is super important. If you have the ability to only have one of your characters in the coverage, it allows you to manipulate the pacing and post a lot more. Another thing is that comedy plays in a wide shot, right? That's a really old known thing in the film industry because the characters can make bigger movements. You know, all of the physical comedians from the silent era, they shot everything super wide so you could see their entire bodies. The whole bit is usually based around them doing something physically. So the more physical the comedy is, the further away or wider you usually want to be. I think another really important thing is about movement in, in the camera is that for these particular setups and this type of scene that I was trying to achieve is that the camera shouldn't probably be moving that much, uh, if at all, because it allows the audience to understand how the universe works and you can get really quickly, you can see what the frame is, you can see the office, you can see where they're at, you get it, right? Anything that allows an audience to be like trying to play catch up or learn what's going on in the frame distracts from the opportunity to set up what's being funny about it. So the sooner that you can get the audience on the same page with you, like this is an office, it's like a beige office, great, here's a guy talking. We're all on the same page, right? As opposed to like, ooh, we're dollying across some pencils and a desk and then a guy's talking like voiceover and then we tilt up and it's a human being, but where are we at? Who's he talking to? I don't know. There's so many questions and that doesn't help with comedy. It helps with drama, but it's not gonna help you that much in comedy. Of course there are exceptions to every rule. I'm speaking in generalities, but if you as a filmmaker focus on the way that you want to tell a scene, and you keep trying to drill down and, and really focus and hone in on what makes this scene work for you as a filmmaker, you're doing a couple things. You're finding your voice and what you think is important to tell the audience, and you're also discovering a leaner, better way of telling story. And I, and I would argue that if you can direct a good dialogue scene, then you're well on your way to be becoming a great filmmaker because most most scenes are people talking to each other. I, basically what I think I'm saying is just keep shooting stuff, but don't feel, don't feel like if you've done something once that you really learned the best way to do it. I think you should repeat doing that thing, at least for a little while, until you think you have a full grasp of how to achieve doing that technique in filmmaking, and then move on to the next. But don't just check them off the list, you know? I hope that makes sense. Okay, that's all the time I got for you. Uh, thanks so much for watching guys really appreciate it please like and subscribe it really helps me out and um, I'll talk to you next week cheers <laughs>